We've talked about the Sabres. We've talked about the Rangers. We've even talked about the Chicago Blackhawks being a potential destination here. Toronto, Vegas, all these teams have had their fair share of the spotlight in conversation in regards to free agent Patrick Kane. But today, we are talking about an idea that may be one of the best ones out there in terms of absolute, unnecessary stacking up of the cards. Because today, we're talking about the idea of Patrick Kane going over to the New Jersey Devils. Now, I'm not making this video out of nowhere. There was an article published on Sportsnet.ca from earlier this week by Emily Sadler. What she did was she looked at six intriguing destinations for UFA Patrick Kane. The link is going to be in the description if you want to go ahead and read this article yourself. It opens up by talking about the post-surgery Patrick Kane and how he's looking pretty good and working out, hopefully coming to a hockey market near you. And it goes over five other teams that can be in that mix. It talks about the Sabres, the Red Wings, the Rangers, a few other teams that we have talked about already. But this is what the article goes out there and writes about with New Jersey in mind. This is the union that we want to see, the article says. Rather than join a team that could have another spring date with New Jersey, maybe Kane hops on the commuter train and heads to New Jersey instead. The Devils roster is young, fast, and full of sharp goal scorers who took a step forward last season, but could likely benefit from a veteran presence that knows a thing or two, or three, about what it takes to win it all. The Kane comparisons have followed Devils star Jack Hughes since before he donned an NHL sweater, and it would be a lot of fun to see the two USA hockey stars join forces, if only for a few months. Cap-wise, it's tough, with new deals for Timo Meyer and Jesper Broad in the books, and Hughes entering the second year of his $8 million AAV deal, the Devils are slated to have just shy of $2 million in space. And so the interesting thing about this article is that it doesn't really go over how it would happen, it doesn't really go over the contract numbers, it doesn't really go over the situation, it just says, hey, it'd be cool, let's see Kane and Hughes together. And just from an X-Factor point of view, from a we-need-to-entertain-the-fans point of view, that makes sense. Patrick Kane is one of the most electrifying players of his generation. Jack Hughes was sort of slated to being a Patrick Kane type of player with maybe a little more pace and a little worse of a shot. So having Kane and Hughes together is a very interesting idea because just the level of dynamism that that pairing could bring Seems like it would blow the roof off. Just imagine that. Kane and Hughes feeding off of each other, dangling by guys, just making some brilliant give-and-go plays. But the problem here with the New Jersey Devils is that I feel like their spot in the lineup for Kane wouldn't really be that great. Because you have a line on the top of Dawson Mercer, Nico Hishier, and Timo Meyer. Pretty good line. I think it's got some great players on it. And... It's considered their first line, quote-unquote, at the time of recording this audio. Add to this a second line of Jack Hughes, Jesper Brat, and Tyler Toffoli. And this line has been absolute dynamite as well. We made the video just a few days ago, going over Toffoli and his comments about how Jack Hughes is the most talented player that Toffoli has ever played with. So if you bring Patrick Kane on... I mean, you're breaking onto a team that's got Mercer Meyer, Hughes Hishier, Brat, and Toffoli... And where is the spot that you're going to put Kane on? I mean, of course, lines move around throughout the season. It's rare to see one line of guys stick together throughout the entire year or maybe even years, plural. Unless it's like Sadine, Sadine Burrows, it's very free-flowing seeing how lines mix and match over the course of an 82-game campaign. So, who knows if Jesper Brat, Jack Hughes, and Tyler Toffoli are going to stick around together for the entire season. If they don't, is Patrick Kane the guy to come in here and dethrone one of these wingers? And then you have the entire idea with cap space. What's Patrick Kane going to sign for? I mean, we know he's probably not going to get $10.5 million a year again, but last season, Kane had 57 points in, what is that, 73 games played? That's definitely not bad. For a guy who is 34 years old, who could produce 50 to 60 points per season, I mean, what is that worth to you in the market? Even if it's a short-term deal, let's say one or two years long, do you give Patrick Kane an AAV of four, five million bucks because he can get 50 points in a season? 
This is a player that won't be cheap. Not everybody can be Blake Wheeler, who is an absolute stud and signs on for less than $1 million just because he wants to go and play for the team he signs with. For Patrick Kane and New Jersey to work something out, Kane would need to take that discount. And I feel like for New Jersey in particular, this is one of the only teams where you could justifyingly say, hey, it would be worth it to take the discount with us because we may be booking our ticket to the third round whether you sign with us or not. We are that darn good and we have a spot for you in our number one power play. If it's middle six, protected minutes at 5v5, and number one power play opportunity time, maybe he plays a minute 30 on the power play. Maybe he gets double shifted because you're signing Kane just to be a power play specialist. If that's an idea that works for you, let's say Hughes, Kane, and Toffoli are putting it together on the power play, then I could imagine just the type of goals Tyler Toffoli could score if he's getting set up not just by Jack and Luke Hughes, but by Patrick Kane as well. Of course, though, 5v5 play is important, and for Patrick Kane, I mean, we saw the video of him skating around in practice. I don't want to make it seem like it looks like he's 100% ready to go already, but he is looking pretty good, and if he's able to continue his progression and rehab in the proper ways that, let's say, he's good to go by the time the season is maybe 20 or 30 games in or whatever, then maybe it works. But money is an issue, roster spots are an issue. If you're a New Jersey Devils fan, I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comments section. What do you think about the idea of Patrick Kane going over to your team? The Sportsnet article I pulled from says that it's the reunion we want to see. Sportsnet's saying this is a desired outcome. Do you agree? If Patrick Kane goes over to the Devils, where do you put him? Who do you replace him in the top six with? Is it Timo Meyer? Is it Tyler Toffoli? Which one of these guys among your five top six caliber wingers, assuming you get Kane, between Mercer, Brott, Toffoli, Meyer, and Kane, who's going onto the third line? And which center do you pair Patrick Kane with? Do you give him number one power play time just because he's Patrick freaking Kane and you want to see that magic with Jack Hughes? How much do you think Jack Hughes is going to be able to learn by playing with a guy like Kane? This was always the comparison, you know? Smaller, American guy that was really good at passing, played with good pace, good puck skills too. What is there to learn from Jack Hughes by playing with somebody like Kaner? And if Kane goes to the New Jersey Devils, how far do you think this team is going to go? How far do you think they're going to go without Kane? Like, we've been saying this throughout the entire offseason, but with all those acquisitions and all the growth exhibited by a lot of these Devils players, this is the team to beat. This team has a buy-in to the second round easy mode. They just got to go out there and do what it is that we expect them to do, and they're going to be fine. So if you add Patrick Kane to that mix, how much better do you get? If, at the end of the day, though, you don't want Patrick Kane, this is not a guy you think is appropriate for your roster, you'd rather see you use your dollars on somebody else, then let me know your thoughts in the comment section as well, if that is the case. I could totally understand if it's like, yeah, the dollar amount just doesn't really align with where we would place him in the lineup, we don't have a spot that would be worth it giving four or five million dollars to a guy like Kane, and we're good enough on our own without him. Let's just use the money for somebody else that could help us in other ways, or make a trade for somebody that could be a good rental for us instead. If Patrick Kane is looking for a one-year deal where he expires in 2024, then maybe, or if he's looking for a longer-term deal, maybe not. What are your thoughts about this entire idea? Kane to the Devil's article is going to be linked in the description. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.